This is a, it's kind of a new song. It's kind of an old, it took me about five years to get, you know, to the point that I could be happy with it. It's a story about a girl, a lady that I met while I was playing in a, one of those country and western bars, kind of where they have, you know, Bloody Mary mix, screwdriver mix, and a baseball bat underneath. I was playing a Saturday matinee, and this girl was sitting there. As soon as I got finished, they turned on the jukebox and the TV, and she was sitting there uh, clapping. And I, first thing, it just, she was just a little bit bigger than a fire plug, but blonde hair swirled up on her head in honor of the Dairy Queen. <laughs> Hit up with a lot of spray net, you know. And I was watching her clap. I couldn't figure out to exactly what, but under here, you know how heavy people get sometimes, this thing was shaking. She was clapping, and this was like underneath of a turkey's neck, you know. And I said, I've got to write a song about her. So I went over and I said, do you mind if I sit down and buy you a drink? She said, hell no. And I bought her what she wanted, which was a shot of Corby's and a beer. You know, and she drank them down, and we started talking. And I find out that she used to be in the roller derby from Texas. And I said, oh, man, for sure I've got to write a song about this lady. And I was just getting ready to start writing down on a napkin or my cuff, you know, something really uh, like you see in the old movies, when her husband came in. Uh, he was a state trooper, about six foot seven. One of those guys took off his flat brim hat and had one of those drill instructor hairdos, like, looked like a felt tip pen, you know? Had that look in his eye. If you look deep enough, you can see the back of his head, you know? I started thinking about that. Plus, the, you know, his IQ being somewhere between a beet and a cabbage. I didn't want to get into any trouble with him. This is one of those guys that said, well, I stopped him for speeding and I fired three warning shots into his head. Uh, and it happens, though, you know? That kind of stuff happens. And I was real scared about what I should do. So I went back home and I started thinking. I said, well... Four years of college, I took English literature, creative writing, philosophy, logic, got out totally prepared for life in the 12th century, which it, it's, oh, you're, in, <laughs> and I didn't know what, rah, 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 where have God wrought, uh, I didn't know exactly what to do, so I went out and bought the biggest bottle of NyQuil I could find. And that kind of put me in somewhat of a horizontal. Put me down on a tilt. Then the next thing, I bought two bottles of Ripple. One red and one white. And drank them. And as soon as I drank them, I realized that Ripple's the only wine made in America that's never seen a grape. It's the truth. And like you drink two bottles of that and mix it in with the NyQuil and like 27 million years of evolution goes <laughs> right down on your knuckles, like pointing and grunting and smiling, <laughs> looking for bananas and everything. But I got two verses done in that state and I was just really happy about it. Then we started moving around, doing a lot of, a lot of traveling and stuff and ended up in San Francisco one night with a real early concert, finished up early, went back to the room, and Maury and me started to play and ordered up some of that apple pie and coffee. Now, you remember that uh, Bon Vivant Vichy Soir scandal last year where everybody was eating the soup and dying because of the botulism? Well, the scandal got so bad that they put them out of business, and they moved out to San Francisco and started making pie. <laughs> and sure enough, that's what they sent up to the room, this Bon Vivant apple pie with a Lucretia Borgia sauce on it. Guy opened up his ring and flipped it on top. We ate it. About a half an hour later, you know, we're sitting there playing, and in stereo, we say, I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> Run like two fools in a hurry to lay our nausea riff on the bathroom. I get there in the classic position of putting your arms around a bowl like this, getting down on your hands and knees, and ah. <laughs> You know, everybody knows what that feels like, too. It's just, it's a, it's a cross-section. Everybody's done it. It's like peeing in the pool in the summertime, you know? Like, so I was tied in with the toilet. 
me in the toilet hooking up. And like Maury had eaten more of it, so like he got to sink in the bathtub. And all night long we're like, Arr. and we're getting calls from the lady at the front desk saying, "I'm sorry, sir, you're not allowed to have seals in the room." You know, and it was it was weird. But the next day, thinking we're both going to die, we sat down again, turned half inside out, and I finished the words to this thing called, "I fell in love with the roller."